that there is joy in this place, that you are here with us. We love you, Father. We worship you. We honor you. I count on one thing, the same God that never fails, will not fail me now, you won't fail me now, in the waiting, the same God who's never late, you're working all things out, you're working all things out, yes I valley yes i will bless your name oh yes i will sing for joy when my heart is heavy oh my things oh yes i same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will. to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names, and nothing can stand against, oh yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley, yes, I will bless your name. something today in Psalm 34 and David writes I will praise the Lord always yes I will I shall praise his name continually and so today when we come into the house of the Lord I believe when we enter into praise this is a choice that comes from the bottom of our hearts this is not depending on 
our circumstances or even what God has done to us, we praise him because of who he is. We praise him because he's powerful. And this song said that we may go through the valleys and even through the tough moments. And for many of you, maybe that's something that you're going through. But regardless of your situation, God still deserves the praise. Because he was forever in the past and he will forever be in the future. He's eternal. The Bible says that there never was a time that he existed. He was always here. And so right now we're going to go back into the um, bridge and we're going to sing this that I choose to praise. Dear brother and sister, if you want to praise the Lord, sing this that I choose to praise. This is a choice from the bottom of your heart. No one's forcing you. No one's making you do this. But let us lift our voice today. He has given us our voices and let us praise the Lord. Let's sing, I choose to praise. And I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. And nothing can stand against, and I choose to praise.
God, you're in this place right now. Your spirit is in this place right now, Lord. Let us continue to worship the Lord of Lords. Let us continue to worship our Creator. Lord, you are holy. Lord, you are worthy. We give it to you. We give it to you today in this service. We recognize your holiness, Lord. Fill this place up. Fill this place up. Let every heart in this place be filled up with your spirit, God. Holy Spirit, we love you. Let your glory rain down in this place. Let your fire rain down, Lord, over us. Release yourself, Lord. Release the fresh wind and fresh fire. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Fill this place up. God of power. in this place. His anointing is over us right now. Let the hunger of God never die out inside of us. I pray right now that the fire continues over us. In Proverbs 27, verse 7, it says, A satisfied soul loathes the honeycomb, but to a hungry soul every bitter thing is sweet. You know, in the physical body, when we eat too much, when we consume too much, and we're full in our physical stomachs, the next plate of food that comes in front of us, we can't even look at it. It becomes sick to us. We reject it. Even though it may look so good and it may look so pleasant to us, we reject it because we are full in our stomachs. We don't want to consume it. The honeycomb is so sweet, but we reject it because we are satisfied. Right right now, I want to tell, tell everyone in this place, we can never be satisfied by the word of God. We can never be satisfied by his spirit. Let us continue to live every single day, daily, every morning waking up, knowing that we can never be satisfied with him. Every single time we read the word, we want to receive fresh revelations, fresh visions from God. That we do not rely on the old manna, but we want to seek him because we are hungry for him. But to a hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. That hunger that's inside of our hearts, anything that's put in front of us, we accept it because we are so hungry for God. Jesus is the sweetness. His works are the sweetness. The sweetness of his life brings the darkness. The sweetness of his blood brings the healing. The sweetness of him takes away all problems inside of us. And right now we could go to a time of offering. You know, offering, it's such a privilege and allows us to show obedience to God. You know, Everything that has been given to us in our lives is all from God. Our jobs that we have are from God. The sales that we make are from God. The house that we have is from God. The car that we drive is from God. The knowledge and wisdom we have, it's all from God. Nothing that we own is from ourselves because he has given it to us. His blessings come forth to us. And right now I want to allow everyone, give with a cherished heart. Give what you want to give. I don't want anyone in this place to give through pressure because then your heart, it's, it's not out of your love. It's out of pressure. It's out of you thinking that you have to do it. Giving is never something that you should have to do. It's something that you want to do. 
And behind us, we have three ways to give. But there's something I want to talk about that you could give to God in a different way and not through money. But it's something that I focus on a lot of my life, and it's something that is so valuable. As you get older, you have less of it. And as you're young, you have more of it, and that is your time. Right now, we're in this place that we give our time to God. But when we leave this place, give your time to God. It is something that is so valuable. You cannot even, you can't buy time in this, in this world. That is why I want everyone to know how valuable that is. And that you may give also with your works and your craftsmanships. There's so many different ways to give to God. And I want everyone to be blessed by it all. We can all pray. And the ushers may come forth. You are holy, Jesus. You are holy, God. I pray right now, Lord God, that you bless every single person in this place. That you bless every single heart, Father God, that gives to you. That we give with a cheerful heart. That we give out of love to you, God, because without you, we are nothing. There's nothing in this place or this world that is more valuable than you. We place it all down here. That we lay our treasures in heaven and not on earth. That whatever we own one day, that fire will burn out. But the fire of you, God, will never, ever burn out, God. And we thank you, Jesus, for this service, Lord, this opportunity that we're able to give to you. That you are holy, Lord, and that you are worthy, Father God. That you bless the speaker's lips, Lord. That you anoint him with your spirit, God. And we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. You may all be seated. Jacob, thank you very much in worship, Ben. That was absolutely awesome. Good afternoon, dear church. Our God is good. Amen. Amen. It is awesome to be in the house of the Lord this afternoon where God is really moving. God is moving. That was such an amazing time in his presence. And now we're going to dive even deeper into his word. But before we dive, I have a couple of quick announcements to make. First and foremost, I do want to welcome every person that is in this place. You made the right choice to be here on a Sunday afternoon. I especially want to welcome our guests. If you are here for the very first time, thank you for visiting us. And if you don't have a place that you can call home as a, as a church, this is a healthy church. We are a good church. We love God. We love God's people. And we love serving one another. And if you are from other churches, welcome. I hope you will be blessed this afternoon. I want to give a special greeting to Pastor Peter Engale from Houston, Texas. Well, let's give him a round of applause. You guys can stand up. We had, an, we had an opportunity a few years ago to pray and bless this family as they went to Houston to open up a church. And God is moving in a powerful way. We are praying for you guys. We love you. Thank you for visiting us. First announcement is the block party is coming up this Saturday. I was driving to church. Guys, I was driving to church this, uh, oh, just what, an hour ago, maybe even a little less. And I turned on Q9997. And, uh, and the song was playing. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. I'm like, well, this is amazing because it's not at all looking like Christmas. And then Silent Night came on, and it's Christmas in July is actually a theme right now all over America and we have an opportunity to reach out to our community. This is this Saturday from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. We're going to have an event in our parking lot. This is what we call a block party Christmas in July. And what this event is, is we pretty much open up our church to the public where we can come and meet our neighbors we can come and meet our community. We can show them, you know, what this church looks like. We, we can really, through our lifestyle and through who we are, we can share the gospel with them and really believe that God will do a mighty work. This is this Saturday. We're going to have an amazing time. There are going to be especially activities for kids. There's going to be food. There's going to be fellowship. It's going to be snowing in here. We got all that taken care of. 
and it's going to be a really good time. So again, this Saturday, if you have it on your heart, if you want to maybe volunteer and help out, you can come see me after service, and we will get you plugged in. The next announcement, which is very important, in just about a month, a little bit over a month, which is um, August 25th through 26th, we're going to have our tax sale, which is also going to be in the church parking lot. And from the first week of August, we will already be collecting donations. So if you have some of your goods that you no longer need, don't throw them out. Save them. Bring them to the church. We're going we're gonna to be fundraising for certain events that we as a church host. So starting the first weekend of August, we will be collecting all of your goods. Uh, also, August 9th through the 12th is youth camp. Sign-ups are already on their way. If you have any questions or you want to sign up, please see me after service and we will take care of it. Another quick announcement is Missionary Bible School is starting August 29th, which is a Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. This is from ages 16 and up. We have an opportunity as a church to host a school where we don't just stay in the four walls of the church, but we leave this church and make an impact in all over our communities, all over western Massachusetts, and God really works in a powerful way. So, so if you want to commit, I believe it's what, nine months or eight, eight month, month school? It's about eight to nine months of a school every Tuesday. And if, if you want to commit and really grow with God and not only grow in God, but what you learn, put it into action, it's a good opportunity with the Missionary Bible School that is starting in just over a month. And last an announcement is this VBS, which is a vacation, or some call it Victory Bible School. Vacation Bible School is starting not this Monday, next Monday. And fortunately, registration is closed. So if you want to sign up, the registration is closed. And those of you who sign up, be there. I think you know all the information. And I'm sorry, we do have one more quick announcement, this way, which is very important. In our banquet hall, or we like to call youth hall next door, we are going to be beginning renovations, which are going to which are going to start also in August. And on August 6th, which is a Sunday, two weeks from now, we're going to have an additional additional offering to cover the expenses. So keep that in mind. But aside from this, aside from all of the announcements, guys, it's good to be in the house of, of the Lord. It really is. God is in this place. You're in, the, you're in this place, and that's a good combination. Again, if you're new here, you want to get connected, fill out the connect card, which is directly in front of you in one of the pews. Connect with us. We'd love to meet you. We'd love to grow with you. And to God belongs the praise, the glory, the honor. But without further ado, I have the honor and the opportunity to invite our guest speaker here this afternoon. He is my dear brother, Pastor Vitali from Dallas, Texas. He's one of the pastors of Heartland Family Church down in Dallas. And this afternoon, we have an opportunity to hear from him. Let's give him a round of applause. Pastor Vitali, thank you so much. I need this. Yeah, I probably need that one. Good afternoon. It's no longer morning, so no excuse for you guys. I was preaching at 9 a.m. service. I was tired, but I was on fire, hopefully. And uh, uh, you have, it's 12.43 p.m. Nobody should be tired by now. If you're tired, you need deliverance. God is good, amen? <laughs> and all the time, God is, good. God is good. Man, the worship this morning was just amazing. I, I am so tempted to just go back to worship. That last song, you're awesome. The worship team, if you're here, can you just step, step back in? Let's just go back to you are awesome God of power. I think it just goes well with the message. I really feel the atmosphere in this place is charged. The atmosphere in this place is charged. We're not here for a man. We're not here for any other people. We're here for the Lord. Amen. I want to I speak today on ministering unto the Lord. It is one of my most important and, and favorite subjects. I'm a worship leader aside from, 
from speaking. I'm a worship leader and worship is the best. You know, the only ministry that never dies is worship. Amen. Pastors, I'm sorry, you will not be pastors in heaven. Deacons, you will not be deacons in heaven. Who else is there? Any other missions or missions, evangelists? There will be not even a soul to save in heaven. So you are going to be unoccupied. You'll be fired. Healers, healing evangelists, faith evangelists, you are going to be out of the job. The only job that is going to be filled is worshipers. Those of you who don't like worship, get used to it because you're going to get into it. If you don't like worship, heaven is not for you. But worship, just stay there you now. Can you add some pat to there? Worship is a place, it is the atmosphere of heaven. If you want your home to feel like heaven, put some worship on. And I'm not talking about worship as a music style, even though it, it helps us in worship. But your house, needs to be, become a house of worship. The Bible says that you and I are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The job of the Holy Spirit is to worship Jesus. Let's just get out on the feet right now. Let's go back to worthy. The whole band, let's go back to worthy. Come on, just raise your hands, begin to worship Him right now. Set the atmosphere in this room.
about a feeling. Worship is about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He doesn't come to worship with us. He comes into this place to receive worship. So don't, feel, don't, don't be deceived by your feelings. Your feelings may dictate something else. But worship, true worship is when you see Him and Him alone and nothing else. There is no feelings. There is no sickness. There is nothing in front of you. There is only Jesus, the King of King and the Lord of Lords. Come on, lift it up. Lift it up. Lift your hands. Worship Him. covered his face and with two he covered his feet and with two the seraphim flew and one cried to another saying holy 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 is the lord of hosts the whole earth is filled with his glory and the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out and the house was filled with smoke so i said woe is me because I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips for my eyes have seen the King the Lord of hosts then the one servant flew to me having in his hand a live coal which he had taken from the tongues of the altar and touched my mouth and with it he said behold this has touched your lips your iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged. The presence of the Lord is in this room right now. The Bible says that His presence fills the temple. The purpose of the house of God is to elevate Jesus. The only name that needs to be glorified in this place. 
is Jesus. Jesus, we honor you. King Jesus. We honor you in this place. Holy Spirit, help us, teach us how to worship Jesus.
presence in this place. You are worthy. Just thank you right now. Lord, thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you for being here. You are so awesome. You are so amazing. You are so awesome, Lord. You are so awesome, Lord. You may be seated right now. Can you continue playing? The pad just can keep on playing. Let's go to Acts chapter 13, verse 2 through 4. Acts chapter 13, verses 2 through 4. There is a sweet presence of the Lord in this room. I believe this is a prophetic word for you today. I believe you are not here by accident. Acts chapter 13 verse 2 as they ministered to the Lord and fasted the Holy Spirit said now separate to me Barnabas and Saul Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them then having fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them they sent them away so being sent out by the Holy Spirit they went out to Seleucia and from there they sailed to Cyprus. Before I go into the message, there are three duties that every Christian must accomplish. It's not a suggestion. It is actually, those three duties actually define you as a Christian. If you don't do those three things, then you're not a Christian that Jesus described in Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 says verse 2 so whenever you give if you don't give you are not a true believer the Bible doesn't says if you give it says when you give it talks about life it talks about finances it talks about you yourself your home everything you own if you give, whenever you give. Number two, verse five. And also when you pray. Not if you pray. Not when you pray for your lunch or for your food or, or before you go to bed to make sure that our bed bugs don't bite. It says when you pray, shut the door behind you and pray to the Father who is in secret place. Every Christian must have a secret place. You must be a giver and you must have a secret place. To everybody it could be a, a whole different thing. My secret place where I run to and that's gonna be weird, that's me. I grew up on swings all my life. When I was a kid, we had swings inside the house and outside the house. I would, I would sing through the whole neighborhood. I was persecuted by my brothers for that because they didn't like my Christian songs. And Slava, he testifies over that. I was persecuted heavily for that. I knew when my, my parents leave the house, I will get beat up for that. I would hide under the table. But swings, it was my place of the secret place. When growing up, going to the park that was my secret place where I hide even now at 12 a.m. sometimes at 1 a.m. yes at 34 a crazy guy swing, swinging swinging on the swings that's me who cares but that's my place that's where I receive my revelations of course I, ha I have my own room that where I go to and pray but there needs to be a secret place that nobody knows about it. and I, I told it to everyone number three every christian or verse 18 when you fast 
every Christian must fast. It's not a suggestion. It is a must. You hate it, that's the purpose of fasting. To kill you. I am not talking about social media fast. That includes social media. I am not talking about fasting from coffee. I'm not talking giving up your breakfast. I am talking about no food. One day, three days, 21 days, 40 days if God leads you. Seven days. What is the one thing you cannot survive? It, it is food. Three things as a Christian you must do. Pray, give, and fast. Jesus made it very clear. I like what Jensen Franklin said. He said, when giving, praying, and fasting are practiced together in life of a believer, it creates a type of a threefold cord that is not easily broken. I have never met a person who said, I fast, I pray, and I give, and I struggle. I've never met a person, never met a couple that says, we pray together, we fast together, we give together, and our relationship is bad. Never. Usually, whenever a person comes to you and say, I, I am in trouble, I need, I'm in bondage, I say, how's your prayer life? Well, I could do better, but I don't have time. You do have time. I see you all on social media, you have time. Oh, I don't have time, I cannot fast. Yes, you can. If fasting was impossible, Jesus would not have made it a commandment to us. Ecclesiastes 4.12 speaks of the threefold cord that is not easily broken. It talks about Jesus at marriage, but it talks about relationship between you and God. When you connect those three things together, your life will be strong and powerful. So let's go back to Acts chapter 13 verse 2. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted. That's why I wanted to, to really put attention into that. It, those three things happen here. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul. The first thing I want to talk about today is ministering to the Lord. It is one thing to minister to people like I do, like our ministers do, like you do, the worship team does. It is one thing to minister to people and we call it the Lord's ministry. It's not really the Lord's ministry, it's the ministry to people. It is one thing to minister to the poor, to people who are in the need. But it's a whole other thing to minister to the Lord Himself. We have many ministers who make career out of their ministries. People become like, become like slaves and they call it is the Lord's work. No it's not. If the Lord's work consumes more time than the time with the Lord, it is not the Lord's work. If you have no time to spend time with the Lord, doing the Lord's work, it is a distraction. Not every good thing is the right thing. Putting on a warm coat is a good thing, but in a hundred degrees weather is a bad thing. We need to discern where the good thing is. We are all, every person in this room is a minister of the Lord. You usher, you help with people, you worship, preaching, pray for others, feed the hungry. They may be your kids but they're hungry. You're ministering to other people. You are a minister. Every one of us is a minister to the Lord, uh, of the Lord. But also, not many of us, not all of us are ministers to the Lord. And this is where I want us to talk about the difference. There is a difference between being ministers of the Lord and ministering to the Lord. Let's go to the story of Esther and Vashti. It is the book of Esther. I'm not going to read those scriptures. You all know this story. 
how does ministry to the Lord look like? I'm glad you asked. I will explain to you right now. There are two princesses or two queens the Bible talks about. One, her name was Vashti, Queen Vashti and another one, Queen Esther. The first Queen Vashti, she made a feast for women. I'm not preaching against women, right? This is not a, a, a female or male preaching right now. What I'm saying is the king had a feast for the royals and their wives were not invited. So the Queen Vashti made a feast for their wives, for the women. So she made a feast, she prepared a table, she prepared all of that for a, a huge celebration for the women and then the king, whenever he was married, he was happy, he wanted to show off his wife to all the, all the princes and kings and he said, call for Vashti. And the servants came and they told Vashti, Queen Vashti, the king requests your presence. And the queen said, no, I'm too busy. I am too busy ministering to people. I am taking care of the women that are neglected. They brought the word back to the king. The king got furious. He got angry. He said, how dare she not listen to me. I asked her this one thing. What does it take for a queen to come and to spend a little bit with the king and leave the party behind her? You know what it speaks about? The king was not her priority. People were. Many times God is calling us and I believe today God is calling you and me and says, brother, sister, spend some time with me. You know what we tell him? Oh, I'm so sorry. Today is Sunday. I have to be in church. I have to sing. I have to minister. I have to prepare. I have to do my makeup. I have to get ready. I have to do all this. I have to get my kids ready so we're not screaming in the car. I have to do all this. And the Lord is saying to you, but I need you. Whenever Queen Vashti disobeyed the king. He asked counselors, what should I do with that? And they, they told him, she disobeyed you. That means she set an example in the country. She can no longer be a queen. You, we have to understand something. The king did not divorce her. She lost her status as a queen. In other words, she was still saved. She was still his wife. But she was one of his wives. I feel anointing speaking this right now. I know God is speaking right now. You may be saved. But your status is not a queen or a king of God. So the king said, now I want, let, let oh, his counselors told him, let us call all the virgins of, this, of the country and let them, let us present them to you. Let us get them ready and present them to you. So now what happens throughout the whole year, the women or the young virgins are being prepared for one night with the king, one encounter with the king. And Esther was one of them. There's a long story. I'm not going to tell you the whole story. But the thing is, they were given, they were given a choice of anything they want to wear in the kingdom, in the palace. They said, you can give anything you want, anything that fits on your body, decorate yourself as much as possible, as best as possible. Because if the king likes you, you'll be the next queen. So imagine every one of them are scrabbling, are using their best creative abilities to get dressed. There was one queen or one, one girl, her name was Esther. She did not try to impress the king with her own knowledge. She went to Haggai and she said, Haggai, 
What does the king like? Many times we come before the presence of God with worship, with what we think God wants. Oh, we believe that. I believe that God wants to hear this song today. Why? Because I like the song. It doesn't mean God wants to hear it. That is why I, I truly believe there is two types of religions in the church or conservatisms. One, all the new songs are bad. The other, the old songs are bad. Same. You're the same. If you have opinion of the old school songs that they are not worth it, that they are bad songs, you are as religious as you can imagine anybody else. A truly free person asks the Holy Spirit, the Haggai represents the Holy Spirit, what does Jesus want to hear this morning? What Lord, what do you want to hear? And so the Bible says, Queen Vashti dressed only what Haggai said the king likes. And then you know the story moving forward whenever she was invited when she was uh, spending the night with the king the king loved her he said that's it she's the one because she did exactly what he wanted now I want us to I want us to focus on this one thing later on there was what's his name more not Mordecai Haman 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 hated the Jews and he wanted to kill all the Jews so he deceived the king into write a decree that says to that gives him permission to kill every single Jew in the in the country so now the word comes to Mordecai who is the uncle of Esther and Esther was actually a Jewish girl she was kind of undercover Jewish girl and Mordecai came to Esther and said that you God has placed you for such a time as this. You need to go and petition be before the king. Esther says, I have not been to the king's presence in 30 days. I am not allowed to enter without his request. If I go and he's in a bad mood or if I go, I may die. He may put me to death right there on the spot. If regardless, you're his wife, does not matter. So the Esther, uh, long to make a long story short, she declared a three-day fast and prayer for that encounter. She comes before the king. And I want you to notice this one thing. Whenever Esther comes before the king, the king immediately loved her. And he said, you can have anything you want. Just ask me up to the half of the kingdom. That means the half of the people. I mean, she could just divide the kingdom right then and make, make Esther's kingdom and the king's kingdom. But she said one thing. And that's where I want us to focus. This one thing she said, I want to request your presence tomorrow at my house. I'll make you a feast. In other words, what she said, King, thank you so much for loving me, for willing to give me anything you want, anything I want, but one, what I want is you. Come back tomorrow. With, I want to minister to you. So the king comes tomorrow. A huge feast and the king is you know what makes a man happy nice food he's not he is happy he is satisfied he says now Esther <laughs> anything you want I'm like I mean anything you want up to the half of the kingdom this is Esther's moment if any of us I would take this moment I mean, I would ask for children of Israel to be saved, but also, you know, I would ask for a Tesla. I mean, something. I mean, ask for something. He has, he is all powerful. Why not just, you know, include some fries with it or something with it? So Esther is standing before the king. Amazing moment, full favor. And she says, Come back tomorrow and I'll make you another feast. Come back tomorrow and I'll minister to you tomorrow. That's the difference between Vashti and Esther. Vashti put people in front of the king. Esther put king in front of the people. Even though the people were dying, or they were, they were 
they were set to die all of them there was hundreds of thousands of people all of them were supposed to die but she's like at this moment that is not important the king is important right now many of us are so busy trying to save people into the kingdom we forget the king Luke 10 41 says Martha Martha you are worried about and upset about many things but only one thing is, ne thing is necessary Mary has chosen the good portion and will never be taken away from her as ministers of the Lord we must learn how to minister to the Lord it is easier to minister from the Lord it is easier to minister to people, to write songs, you get fame, you get glory, to carry a title, it's easier. But the hour is coming, John 4, 4 23, and now is when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. Seeking, that means there's not many of them. Not many of them. Worship is the only thing that will give God. Worship is the only thing that we can give God that He has not gave to us first. God gave you everything. We're tithing. We're tithing from what God gave us. We're praying from the language that God gave us. We're fasting from everything God gave us. Worship is one thing that God never gave us. Worship is the only one thing we can bring to God without Him bringing, giving to us first. That is why it's so valuable to God. When you begin to minister to Him, you're doing something that God has never given you. He never worshipped anyone. He was the, always the object of worship and you begin to worship Him. He is pleased. So let's go back to Acts chapter 13 verse 2. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted. What's ministered to the Lord? They created a banquet to the Lord. They enjoyed the presence of God. They worshipped Him and fasted. The Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul. And that's where I want to talk right now. Number one, you must minister to the Lord. Number two, as you minister to the Lord, God begins to separate you from everybody else. That is why there is a difference you can see a difference when the person takes the stage or when the person is talking that some that person carries something there's something different about that person everybody else is the same but wow something is different why God begins to separate those people I will never forget I was an under 40s conference last year not this year but last year in Sacramento and they had a pastor from King's Chapel I forgot his name uh, I never knew him before and there was a panel they were just talking the panel discussing generation it came it came Peter you were there with me uh, it came to his turn everybody was talking I'm not saying that and the pastors were not anointed everybody was anointed but there was something he just said one word let me talk about faith I was like whoa who's this man there was it was like a weight that just dropped into the room I mean you can testify to this there was like wait and I was sitting there, I was glued I was like I want to hear everything that man says why because he is separated but you know what we all want separation we all want to carry that anointing that power in us but I, I have to warn you separation is not fun it's not what you're expecting whenever Paul and Barnabas were, uh, were separated they started going through persecution. Paul was beaten three, I think three times, almost to death. He was stoned. He, had, he was in prison many times. He, he, had go, he had to go through hell as God was separating him. Why do you have to go through this stuff? Because God will begin to prune your appetites. He'll begin to prune the lust of your flesh deal with your behavior your addictions your pride and your character 
I'm gonna tell you this when you begin to minister to the Lord the Lord will put his finger on you and as he puts his finger it's kind of like if you ever put your finger on a grape and you begin to put some force into it you separate that piece of grape from every other grape in the plate and you begin to put pressure on it you separate it all the juice is coming out everything that is inside the grape begins to come out why God does this is he wants to purify you he separates to purify us first and then he can do work with us the goal of separation is total dependence on the Lord as long as I can do it God won't I'm not saying he can't I'm saying he will not but when I end God begins Paul was beaten and persecuted David was running away for Saul from Saul for over a decade Joseph was sent to prison Moses was 40 years in the wilderness Jesus spent 40 days led by the Holy Spirit separated and let 40 days in desert be tempted by the devil Jacob was limping because his hip was touched because he was fighting with the Lord there was a separation happening I think I'm prophesying to some of you some of you when you begin to minister to the Lord God will begin to separate you and that means everything around you is gonna go against you people will no longer understand you your friends will ignore you and that is a huge compliment that means you no longer are in the, their level you're in the next level now you have to begin to find new friends the ones who broken hips the ones who do a limit being the ones that have full dependence on the Lord I had many friends when I was growing up here all of them changed why because there's separation happening and you will be separated from glory to glory from glory to glory from strength to strength and number three when you minister to the Lord when God separates you you will become an extension of God into this world have you ever have you ever drank from a water hose outside I know right now that says that it's, it could be deadly and stuff when I was a kid I'm still alive I was drinking from the hose and it was amazing water it was cold it was nice uh, when, it, when you drink from the hose anything that is inside the hose will enter into my mouth why because the hose could be contaminated whenever you become an extension of God you become that hose God wants to make sure that pollution doesn't come through there God wants to make sure that sin doesn't flow through that hose God wants to make sure that pride doesn't flow through that hose what God wants to make sure is that pure water is flowing through the hose and that is why God needs to separate you maybe beat you up a little bit it's okay yeah it's not a message of hyper grace and everything's gonna be fine everything's gonna be great I'm telling you your life is gonna become like a hell but you'll get through it you know what I just I just heard T.D. Jakes say this and it's just so fitting right now he said you know why Jesus did not die at a post well, he was beaten almost to death did you, did you know that um, John Cav Cavier what's his name who, who was an actor and passion of Christ he was Jesus acting Jesus whenever there he was at the pole and they were whipping him one of those one of those uh, lashes actually ended up on his skin he almost died one and there was there was at least 10 of them on the back and that was whipped 39 times into Jesus's back he got saved right after this and now T.D. Jakes is saying do you know why Jesus did not die at a post do you know why Jesus was still carrying the cross we're almost dead but he did not die because his purpose was not 
there his purpose was at the cross and I'm gonna tell you you may be crushed you may be destroyed your reputation may go bad but I will tell you this until the purpose is fulfilled you will not die you will not die Exodus chapter 34 verses 29 through 30 says now it was so when Moses came down from the Mount Sinai and the two tablets of testimony were in Moses hands when he came down from the mountain that Moses did not know that his skin of his face shone it was shining while he talked with God so when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses behold the skin of his face was shining and they were afraid to come near him. Moses was separate. He ministered to the Lord on the mountain and he was separate. He paid the price to go on the mountain. Can you imagine climbing up the Mount Sinai fasting 40 days in the wilderness? It gets worse. That's why he couldn't die. There's no water but he can die because his purpose is not on Mount Sinai. His purpose is down there and I'm telling you this, you will not die. The hell is going to come against you. The devil will try to destroy you. He'll try to crush you but you will not die. The demons are going to start attacking you. In your family the children will get sick. We just started worship nights in, in Dallas, Texas. God has been moving mightily. And we've noticed every time the worship night comes, that whole week begins a hell in our family. Everybody gets sick as something is happening. Nightmares, stuff and dreams and fears. I mean, you, the, the attacks are coming from all of the sides. Why? Because you're stirring the nest of the devil. And I want to tell you, and I want to tell you, my beautiful wife, God, God has a purpose. And that means this will not stop us it won't stop coming towards our way but it will not stop us same thing i want to tell you when everything is coming against you people hate you it will not stop you because you have a purpose god wants to separate you and he wants to send you purify you and send you let's stand on our feet right now i hope i didn't go over time i was not even looking at the clock i'm so sorry I want to make an altar call of devotion and dedication. I'm not looking for numbers. I'm not looking for wow, what a, what a response was. I'm looking for people who are a hundred percent ready to lay their lives down and to be to allow God to separate them. To allow God to separate them. Close your eyes right now. Lord, I thank you for your presence in this room. If you're in this room, just come if you want to dedicate your life. This is a moment of death. This is the moment of death. When you begin to die to yourself. Yeah.
Lord, we give you our lives right now. Lord, I give you my life. I surrender everything I have to you. Lord, help us to die the death of our life. That it's no longer us, it's you. That we care about, it's you. That it's only you. Dedicate your life to Him. Just dedicate your life to Him. You're not in the room I want to look around 
just raise your hands right now everybody in this room raise your hands those of you who are praying just stay there raise your hands right now and say Holy Spirit baptize me with fire give me a desire to minister to this to Jesus Holy Spirit I cannot do it by myself I need your help because I want to be yours And I want you to count on me. You can count on me, Lord. Just tell him, Lord, you can count on me. You can count on me. In Jesus' name.
is that name. Worthy is that name. The name of Jesus. We exalt in this place. We exalt your name over this house. We exalt your name over our lives. We exalt your name over our families. We exalt your name over our children. And we declare and profess the blood of Jesus Christ. We proclaim and profess the power of the Holy Spirit over our lives, over our families, over our children, over our ministries. We pray in the name of Jesus that all that we do in this time here on earth would be so focused on you, Lord, that we would become open vessels before you, that we would not speak on our own accord, and that we would not act on our own accord, but that you would speak through us, and that you would move through us, and that you would use us, Lord, to be your witnesses here on earth, that we could live a Christ-centered and a Christ-filled life here, Father. We bless your name. Father, we pray that the anointing that is so rich in the atmosphere in this place, that it become an anointing that settles upon our hearts and our minds. That the fire we've been exposed to today, Father God, would become a kindling of fire within us, Father, and that we would carry it to the ends of this earth. Father, we pray that the breakthrough that you bring into our lives week after week, Father God, would begin to break out of these walls and into the lives of our close loved ones that you would come and just break through in the lives of our children, Father. We pray right now in the name of Jesus that even at that age, Father God, you would rise them up as ministers before you, that they would seek your face, seek your face while there is still time, that you would expose yourself to them and anoint them and proclaim your truth in their lives. Father, we honor you. We thank you for the words spoken in this place. We pray in the name of Jesus that your Holy Spirit would just begin to come and minister and begin to cultivate that earth, cultivate that word, that it sprouts into fruit in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. We thank you. We love you. And in your name, we come together and say, amen. Amen. God is good. He is a doing a new thing and he wants to do it through each and every one of us. We want to let you know that the altar, while service is ended, remains open in this place. If you have a need, a want, a desire for prayer, our ministers remain behind and we're waiting for you. If you're leaving, right out these doors to the right, down the hall to the cafe, if you're here for the first time, we want to minister to you and bless you with some of the finest cup of coffee New England has to offer. Don't rush home. Stick around. We love you. Could you remind